My name is Michael Butchkow. I'm the owner of The Bicycle Place here in Silver Spring, Maryland. Uh, I started biking when I was about six years old. Uh, and that's when my dad took me down the street, let me go, and I was in love after that. So uh, I didn't get into serious cycling until about, oh, when I was about 20 years old. Uh, I try to at least uh, cycle to work every day. Uh, I try to get in some training rides in the morning. Uh, being a, a parent of two wonderful kids and uh, trying to keep a household together with my wife, uh, I, I could always cycle more. Um, actually, I just finished up a, uh, a truck travel trip uh, in Tuscany uh, and got away from the kids, took my wife. Uh, we had a, a great, splendid time uh, under the Tuscan sun. Uh, and we, we rode for a good six days and truly enjoyed the countryside. Got to ride uphills, downhills, uh, and I would recommend it to anyone uh, to definitely do some type of cycling trip, get away from it all. We've actually uh, not only been in, into Tuscany, but also in the Veneto region up around Venice and a really nice place called Bassano del Grappa. Uh, and we've cycled the, the Dolomites and basically the mountains up there and uh, seen the Giro d'Italia. I've seen the Tour de France. Uh, I would say the Giro d'Italia is probably a little bit more fun. The Tour de France is more hype and more marketing and much bigger. I got involved with bike racing back in 83, 84. I was riding my bike quite a bit. My cousin, who's six years older than I am, uh, had gotten me into racing. Um, I was attracted to that side of the sport. Uh, started learning more and more about the different pro athletes uh, like Bernardi No and Sean Kelly. Those are guys from the 80s that probably a lot of people don't know, but some of the older guys do. Um, so over time I, I wanted to see some of these bike races and eventually the Tour de Pont came to the city of Baltimore uh, back in 1989 and uh, went up, saw it, fell in love with it, wanted to see more. Uh, and the next or the following year, I started working for the bicycle place and uh, got to know a lot of different people in the industry. Uh, was invited up to Baltimore again and I got to meet Greg Lamont. And uh, that really took me to a different level because I met even more people got invited to different races and actually helped with the races. So uh, right now I, I work for the Tour of California, the Tour of Georgia, the U.S. Pro Championships down in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, I'm the assistant routing coordinator for signs and technical applications of the routes. So uh, that's what I do now. And uh, I take a week or two off for each one of those events and uh, get to travel and see the country and, and get to see the pros. So uh, it's, it's fascinating and, and I love the sport and uh, so sometimes I try to bring all that back and have rides here that are similar to like a Tour de France Peloton and uh, try to train people in such a way that they can enjoy cycling and being comfortable in a group. We went over uh, for the 2004 tour. It was Lance's sixth uh, tour win. Uh, two days before he went up to Alp de Wes, the time trial up Alp de Wes, uh, we actually climbed up Alp de Wes. And my wife and I realized that the amount of people walking, running, riding their bikes, taking a car, taking a truck, going up Alp de Wes, they were also coming down Alp de Wes. And for a good eight miles of nonstop traffic going up and down that mountain, it was somewhat difficult to ride. But it was a spectacle in, in a sense. It was basically like a traveling carnival. And you got to see all types of people there from all types of the, all from around the world. Um, it was a great experience and uh, I recommend it to anybody uh, to at least experience one stage of the Tour de France. And then probably after that, uh, you know, just try to climb it without all those crowds there. Um, seeing some of the, the pros, uh, 
nobody really feels what it's like on, on TV and how, how large those mountains are um, or how fast those guys are going up a hill. Um, I remember being at one of the, the mountain passes as, a, uh, as a, one of the cyclists came up and I put my hand on his back and pushed him and uh, realized how rock solid of a, of a person that was. And he, his, his body fat was probably right around like two or three uh, percent. So he was nothing but rock solid muscle. And even though they look like these little guys on TV, they are nothing but rock solid muscle. Um, and it's fascinating to see how fast they go up these hills when maybe a normal person is doing about five or six miles an hour, these guys are doing 20 miles an hour. And it looks like they probably have an engine on their bike because they're going so fast. So it's, it's interesting to see not only the, the sights, but also the sounds and, and just get the overall flavor of the, the moment. Some of the most fun I've had uh, are some of the road, just some of the training, training races that we have in the area. Uh, you sometimes just get a great feel for like beating your buddy and uh, and then beating you sometimes you know it just goes round and round um, I think mountain biking uh, the mountain bike race scene was a great scene to be in uh, definitely there's a difference between road racing and mountain biking uh, road racing is more uh, I would say physical in, in nature or a physiological sense because you really have to work on making sure that your heart rate's at a certain certain level um, you're not really worried about what's in front of you every 10 feet like in mountain biking so I think mountain biking is more taxing on your mind than physically that is unless you hit a tree so um, so it, it they both have their good things and uh, and that's what it's all about. I, I think being able to, to race road, to race mountain, uh, you get an appreciation for both. Um, now there's a large contingent of people that are doing triathlons, so swimming, biking, running, uh, done a few of those. Uh, I, I guess the, the mantra right now that's being pushed uh, is advocacy, and that is go by bike. Uh, and, the, and the key thing is, is if we can cycle within the first two miles of where you live, uh, you could reduce quite a bit of pollution, uh, save on gas, and actually uh, get a little bit of exercise. So if we could do that, that's really a, a big thing. So there are bikes in this store and bikes all around that people can ride to and from the grocery store, to and from their work, to and from school. Uh, so my advice is go buy bike and always go by bike. If you can fit it into your little schedule, boom, uh, you'll get a little exercise, save on pollution, save on gas. It truly changed my life and, uh, and I feel like I could change other people's lives if they started cycling also. Um, I look at the healthful benefits of it, um, not only for a single person, but also the community at large. And uh, that's one of the main things I like about cycling. I like the the overall physical and mental uh, positive uh, reinforcements. So uh, to me, cycling is life.